What's up, family? Okay, this is a follow-up to the video that I posted yesterday about the cosmetic company Shea Moisture, who is in a lot of trouble with black women because of this ad that they posted on their social media that features three white women and a black woman raving about their product. Now, the beef is that Shea Moisture, since they've become huge and successful off the money, the pocketbook of black women, now they're trying to uh, expand and leave black women behind. Black women are also complaining that the formula has changed. Many black women are complaining that the formula has changed. Now, in fairness, I do know some women, I have spoken to some women who says that the formula is the same at least for the product that they're using. Now, Shea, it should be noted, makes over 150 products. So I'm not sure exactly what product uh, these women who says that the formula has changed are using. So let me make sure that I put that out there. Now, earlier today, I talked to Phil Scott over at the Vice show, and Phil told me that some of the workers over there at Shea Moisture, at Sundale, who is the parent company of Shea Moisture, has a number of white people working in key positions. And I was like, whoa, really? That might explain it. In fact, that would explain why they would put an ad out there and shake up the black community like that. So I started doing some research. Sure enough, first person I came across was Christine Kine. I first came across her LinkedIn profile, but when I clicked on it, there was no picture there. So well, I realized that it had been deleted. The profile had been deleted. So I did some more searching and I came across her profile on Ola. And she listed herself as the VP of brand strategy for Shea Moisture and Nubian Heritage. Now, I also came across Lauren Walsh, another white woman. She listed herself as an associate communications manager and PR slash events. So these are white women in super key positions at Shea Moisture who gets to decide what type of images go out there for the company, this company that was founded by black people for black people. Now I understand that you have to grow and I understand expansion and all that kind of stuff. But when you start talking about changing the formula, th that could be debt to a company when you change the main formula of something that works. You know, if you go to a soul food restaurant and let's say black people make that soul food restaurant successful, they start buying up everything in there and it becomes popular, it's hugely successful. And now white people starting to come in, they find out about it, they coming in, they like it. They're sitting in, they're buying the food, they're eating it up. And all of a sudden, the owners change the ingredients. That doesn't happen. Because when people purchase a particular food, whether it be soul food or any kind of food, they're purchasing, purchasing that food based on uh, what attracted to them in the first place, attracted them to the food in the first place. They're not, gonna, they're not going to like the food if you change the food. You know, you're changing the ingredient, you're changing the formula. So they're not going to buy it. Now, if anything, you might add some things to the menu that other people might like, 
but you're not going to change that formula that made people like your product in the first place. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. And so that's why some women, many women, many black women are up in arms. Now, Bain Capital, that's a name that keeps coming up. People are saying that it's owned by Mitt Romney. Truth of the matter is, the company revealed that Mitt Romney hasn't had an investment in Bain Capital in over 16 years. So that's out. And they also said that the formula hasn't changed and it won't change. They have over 150 products. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's that one product or, or, or if it's they're talking about several products or they're just talking about all their products. They're not, they're not going to change the formula. I don't know. But they're saying that they have not changed the formula. So I don't know. Now, I'll say this. It's exciting, you know, to see how naturalist, you know, black women have inspired women from other backgrounds to embrace their natural beauty. That's a good thing. But it's a problem when black women, even when they start something and they make something great and somebody try to come in and take over and they still have to fight for inclusion for the shit that they started. You know, that man, that is a slap in the face, man. It's, it's like it's a constant struggle, no matter what. It's always a struggle. Now, I'm going to tell you this, though. When it comes to business, it's always a possibility of change, whether you are successful or whether you're not successful. But if you are successful, I can guarantee you there's going to be some changes and there's going to be some changes that companies are not going to like that the customers are not going to like um yeah and, and employees are not going to even like it even like when i look at festivals when i look at south by southwest festival one of the biggest festivals in the world when it first started it was really about local and regional talent like real good pure talent then they just started growing and the big boys came in and started dropping those dollars and then it kind of got watered down and now it's just a big old show with just a bunch of people everywhere and some people not even music lovers and they they started not just doing music they started doing film and uh, interactive games and now they're doing sports and all kind of stuff so it grew and it's not the same so you got people that started off with southwest by southwest don't even go anymore so Anytime you change that formula, you risk the chance of losing the purest. Now, again, black women are underrepresented in the cosmetic world and they purchase 80% more than anybody. But if you go down these aisles, there's only one little small section. And I saw a video that uh, Shea Moisture did some time back and they showed them, uh, this black woman walking down the aisle and they show one aisle, it said beauty. And then the little section where the black women find their products, it said ethnic. That's a slap in the face. So anybody that's playing on bo uh, boycotting Shea Moisture, make sure y'all boycott CVS, Walmart, Walgreen, uh, Rite Aid, and all the mother motherfuckers. Because that's some dirty shit right there to say that the products that cater to white women are beauty products and your products, the same type of products with, with diff, different formulas, same category, but it's ethnic. That's a slap in the face. And if y'all gonna boycott somebody, make sure y'all throw them motherfuckers in there. Now, I don't believe that if a product really works for a person a hair product especially that a person just going to drop and just stop using it just because of one commercial no matter how egregious that commercial is no matter how offensive the commercial what well, i just don't believe that they're going to you know one miscue 
that this is going to stop using. Now, if they change the formula, I get it. But it's very hard to find products that work for you. I ain't got no hair, but I do, I do use lotion. I use conditioners, you know, uh, you know, for mustache, stuff like that, you know, for my face, you know, I use you know, scrubs and stuff like that. Razors. It's very hard. You got to go through a lot of products to find that product that works for you. And I just don't believe that it's going to be any kind of like real mass exodus for people who actually use the product and it works for them. I don't see that really happening. Now, it should be noted that expansion does not mean uh, exclusion. You can expand. A company can expand without excluding their, you know, their core base, their core customer base, because it happens in music all the time. You have an artist that start off and you know, black people love them and, you know, they blow up and all of a sudden everybody else start loving them. And sometimes that artist remains true to form and he gives that his core base what they want, but he also makes other music where it's more diverse and other people starts to accept him. Uh, you know, I, I can give you a great case would be somebody like, you know, R. Kelly or, or Beyonce um, or even Little Richard or Michael Jackson, you know, other people start accepting them. Now, but you also have those kind who, when they get up there, they just switch it all the way up and they become something totally different. You can't even appreciate the music anymore. So, Shea Moisture, make sure y'all don't make that mistake. Make sure you don't make that mistake. Now, y'all can get this thing right. But one of the first things you're gonna have to do is get in there and hire some sisters. You're gonna have to put some sisters in some key positions. You can't be running, you can't be marketing uh, a black product, a, a product for women, black women, and not have black women in key positions calling shots and having a say so in how your product, that product is promoted. Because, hey man, white women just don't know. I'm gonna tell you, just like black women, for the most part, would not know uh, how to market to, to white women. It's the same thing. Most black women ain't got no idea about how, you know, about what a white woman's hair do. It's the same thing. That's why you see black barbers mostly cutting black people hair, and you see white barbers cutting white uh, white people's hair, and you know, Hispanics cutting Hispanics hair, or white people, you know, people with fine hair cut people with fine hair. Uh, people with coarse hair cut people with coarse hair. It's just something about that that chemistry that just makes it work. Now, I'm going to say this before I go. This whole fiasco, this whole uproar, it has nothing to do with excluding white women. This is not about excluding white women. This is about making a product for black women and changing it to accommodate white women. That's what this is about. If you like my videos, go check out my Patreon page and join the movement. Patreon.com slash Willie D Live. The link is in the description. No more talk. What, what the haters talking about? Yeah. Order, Texas.